Over the last 12 months, yeah. we've tested an awful lot of bikes here on Road CC, and this is the point where we decide on um, which ones are our bikes of the year. So I'm joined here at the cafe table <laughs> by our technical editors, Matt Brett and Dave Arthur, and we're going to run down our top 11 super bikes of the year. So, 11 bikes? Yeah, 11. We're thinking outside the box this year. Everyone's gone. Everyone's going 11 speed, and so have we. What's the criteria for a superbike to get to shoot it out with the other superbikes in our Road TC Superbike Shootout, I hear you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. The criteria is simple. It's not about money. It's only about performance. So, these are bikes judged solely on what they deliver when you put the pedal to the uh, metal, well, tarmac, uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's about going fast. Without further ado then, let's talk about the bikes. Road CC Superbikes of the Year. Here are the contenders. 11, Ridley Noah Fast. Aero bikes with integrated braking are the bleeding edge of bicycle technology and the Noah Fast combines several aero features that make it incredibly quick yet with a ride that is responsive and fun. 10. Legend HT 7.5 Out of the world performance with superb ride manners best sum up this Italian made legend. 9. Passoni Top Force W. Eye wateringly expensive, the most expensive bike road CC has ever tested, in fact. But if you can afford it, the Passoni offers stunning build quality, performance, and the exclusivity you get with that sort of price tag. Eight, Guru Photon. Far from the best known brand, the Guru impressed is a high-end race bike that combines a very light weight with an amazing degree of frame stiffness. The ride quality is fabulous. 7. Rally Militus As ridden by the Rally Pro Continental Race Team, this bike's competition credentials stand out. A superb handling machine. 6. Kinesis Grand Fondo Titanium our frame set of the year, the titanium version of the Kinesis Grand Fondo, is a real looker and sheds some weight too. It's our pick for putting in the miles in style. 5. Stork Phenomenalist The Stork is without doubt one of the stiffest bikes we've tested over the past 12 months. It possesses phenomenal speed and will really test the limits of what you're capable of on a bike. 4. Canyon Ultimate CFS LX 9.0 The previous model was our 2011 bike of the year and the redesigned version is even better. It's lightweight and responsive, rigid and efficient and it's easy to handle. You'll do well to find a better race bike at this price. That price at the time was £3,700 which is a lot of money obviously but compared to other world tour level bikes it's cheap basically. Um, this is the lightest bike I've ever ridden. I don't know if it's the lightest bike Road CC's ever had in, but it's got to be right up there or down there, however you like to look at it. Just over six kilos, 6.08 kilos. Um, incredibly light frame, 790 gram. The fork and the headset are together just 400 grams, um, and it rides as you'd imagine, a super light bike would ride in that it's so quick off the mark, it's unbelievable. And uh, climbing's an absolute delight. Um, what it isn't, some, some really light bikes, you kind of sacrifice stiffness through the frame to get that light weight. Obviously, if you're using less material, it's, uh, it's harder to keep the stiffness up, but there's, there's zero flex through the frame. That's one of the, that's probably the most amazing thing about this bike. Um, is that Canyon have managed to combine super stiffness with this massive light, massively lightweight frame. So they've, um, they've slimmed down certain parts of the bike, they've slimmed down the Maxima seat tube, uh, they've added a press fit bottom bracket and the bike just feels exactly like it did before, but um, it's, it's just lighter and um, it rides amazingly well. Like I say, 
3,700 is still a lot of money, but for what you're getting here, it's, uh, it really is something special. Three, Merida Scultura SL Team. Merida Scultura SL hugely impressed us, turning heads with a ride that's fast, stiff and comfortable. Like all the World Tour bikes, it's, uh, it's pretty lightweight. Ours came in at 6.45 kilograms. It's a lightweight bike, but it doesn't flex or, uh, or any, anything that you might think that a lightweight bike would. You've got Merida sort it right out with uh, what they call double chamber technology, which essentially is running a reinforcing rib down the middle of the down tube and the fork legs to increase rigidity. So you've got two chambers. It's not absolutely new, it's been, you know, um, other people have used something similar, but what it does is it, re it reinforces with very minimal addition of weight. They can take the wall thickness down because they run this extra rib down the middle. The other thing, the other interesting technology in this bike is that Merida use what they call their vibration damping bioflax fibers which is a quite uh, long-winded way of saying that they've incorporated fibres into the frame that take the damping out of the ride. Whether, obviously it's impossible for us to say what's causing it, but the ride is very smooth, so, so we're saying it works. It's an, it's the, exactly. It's, it's a given that when you get to bikes at this price, that they're lightweight and very stiff. The difference is that some are more comfortable than others, so uh, manufacturers have been quite innovative in uh, incorporating technological solutions to bring in to smooth the ride. Which at the end of the day isn't just about keeping people comfortable, it's also a performance thing. If you're feeling less fatigued at the end of your bike, at the end of your race because the, the ride's been smoother, you're in a better position to uh, sprint it out at the end. The other point there is that uh, your bike stays more in better contact with the ground as well over rough roads if the bike's able to even out the vibration. Two, Bianchi Infinito CV. Underneath the Celeste paint finish is some really smart and cutting edge carbon fibre technology that gives the Infinito CV a class leading ride. For comfort and speed, there are a few better options. So what do we know about the cone bell technology? It, it is a layer of carbon that's integrated into the layup of the bike, the natural shear of the carbon fibres. And, the, and it, essentially, it's, nothing's been added to the carbon, it's just the way the individual fibres are aligned and then aligned with the fibres that are in the layers above and below them, I'm guessing. The upshot of all that is, it filters out the high frequency vibrations that you get. So the constant sort of road buzz, uh, simply, isn't there, it doesn't reach, it doesn't reach your contact. The Yankee reckon that it takes, they would like to put a figure on it, they reckon it takes as much as 75% of the high frequency vibration yeah. out before it reaches you in the saddle. Yeah. I mean the interesting thing about it as well is, it's a comfort bike, but it's got, again, it's got race geometry, it isn't like, it's not one of the sort of old school sportive bikes, yeah, with, sportive a huge head, bike. yeah, with a huge head tube on it, it is a comfortable performance bike. And the, the opinion thing about CV is always working. I like some bikes that have a, yeah. a system that only works when you sit, sitting down. Yeah. Yeah. It's working all the time when you stood up, descending, yeah. climbing, sat down in the cobbles. Yeah, so I mean, top marks to Bianchi for, for um, bringing in some cutting ed, edge technology. And they managed to do it without adding much weight to the frame. It's still a sub yeah. kilo frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be on a very light bike. Uh, and, and it'll be worth looking forward to, well, we are looking forward to the uh, disc brake version when it finally lands in. 2014. Superbike of the Year, BMC Team Machine SLR01.
The BMC is simply the best performance bike of the year, with great handling and a vastly improved frame design from the previous incarnation. And why is it the Superbike of the year? Well, David, tell us. That's a very good question. So the BMC Team Machine is a bike I had a soft spot for riding this year. One of the, the most fun bikes I've ridden, I think. The Team Machine's been in their range for a good few years now. And for this model, they developed their own computer software, modelling software called ACE, which they developed at the local university. Mm -hmm. The result is it's one of the lightest frames. It is the lightest frame they produce. Yeah. Sub 800 gram frame, which puts it in the competition, no, in the, the same realm as the Stork and the Merida and all the other super lightweight bikes out there. But while it's undoubtedly light and undoubtedly hugely stiff, it's also surprisingly comfortable for a, a race bike. Mm. I found it more comfortable than I was imagining when when I first tested it. you expecting it to be? No, absolutely, yeah. The BNC Team Machine is Superbike of the Year because it offers a, the best balance of all the properties you look for in a, in a road bike. The stiffness, the weight, and handling, comfort. But it's also how it makes you feel when you're riding a bike. It's just it's a, a fun bike to ride. It well, feels good. you said it's the best bike you've ever ridden, didn't you? It is, yeah. I would say it's the best bike I've ridden so far. Yeah. Well, the best performance, out and out performance bike. For out and out performance, a few bikes come close to it, in my opinion. So, if you had an infinite amount of money at your disposal, would you buy this bike? I would buy it. Yeah. I think that's the ultimate test, isn't it? Would you buy it with your own money? And if I could afford it, I would. Well, that sounds like a super bike of the year to me then.